spirited men and organizations who make it the Grey Cup Festival. The parade is two hours long, the armed services sections leading off and paying tribute to the newly appointed Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, Major General George Perks. The sun comes out for the first time in a week and bathes Miss Grey Cup from Edmonton in a golden glow. Missed, but only by a few whiskers. They shovel it high, wide, and handsome in the subway city. Miss Grey Cup, 1980. There they are, up to their old trikes. The pride of the Montreal Football Club with 50 more high-stepping mamzelles behind and the Alouette Band to play them on. Miss Grey Cup, 1981. Miss Toronto Argonaut, a lovely substitute for a young school teacher whose duties kept her in the classroom. Beautiful prairie flower, Miss Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Capital cutie is Miss Ottawa Roughrider. Who cares if the tulips aren't always in bloom? The girls are. Miss Grey Cup, 1982. This kitten represents the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They promised to bring the whole family to the Grey Cup game in 1961. Kamloops never had it so good. The band was away for three whole days. Miss Calgary Stampeder heads up a contingent from the city that inaugurated Grey Cup parades way back in 1948 when they invaded Toronto to cheer their team to victory. Vancouver has the largest Chinese population in any North American city except San Francisco. These graceful and charming young ladies, dressed in costumes of their homeland, are part of the Vancouver Chinese girls' drill team. The parade's over, so it's off to Empire Stadium. A program is only half a dollar. But even a bulging wallet is no guarantee of acquiring a ticket. Empire Stadium broke attendance records all season, and there's no doubt that football in Vancouver has even a rosier future. Some weighty reasons for optimism on the part of the Ottawa fans. Three years of building for Frank Clare. Today may be his shining hour. The quarterback slots the question mark, Ron Lancaster, or the more experienced Canadian-born Russ Jackson. Only time will tell and that commodity is 
fast running out. Coach Eagle Keys of the Eskimos has worries of his own. Will he go with the Canadian quarterback Don Getty or the fabulous import Jackie Parker? The Edmonton backfield is the most feared of any team in the Western Football Union. The officials, Seymour Wilson and Bill Nair. Ralph Cooper, the president of the Canadian Football League, kicks off. Sam Berger, president of the Big Four, holds. Now for the play-by-play, -play, here is Steve Douglas. Okay, Ted Reynolds, we're all set to go. The Ottawa Rough Riders in white jerseys. Just conferred with head coach Frank Clare. Edmonton, they wear the green jerseys. And it's Tommy Joe Coffey who kicks off for the Eskimos and the ball game is underway. Taken by Doug Daniel, a fine run back, finally hit down by Coffey on the Rough Rider 42. The Ottawa quarterback is Russ Jackson, and he displays his varied talents early with this 15-yard gallop before Ed Gray makes the tackle on him. This is fullback Dave Thielen into the line for just one yard. Gino Fracas makes the stop. The Edmonton defense stiffens again with Nat Dye and Al Equier moving in to drop Jackson for a six-yard loss. On third down, it's Jim Conroy back to kick. Rolly Miles on the receiving end, and Angelo Mosca comes in with a driving tackle. The ball squirts loose, and Gil Archambault falls on it. The first break of the ball game gives Ottawa possession on the Edmonton 24. The Rough Riders' mighty might, halfback Ron Stewart carrying on a wing reverse for seven yards, Joe Bob Smith tackling. This time the fast handoff to Stewart produces five yards and the first down. It's Stewart again, and even in slow motion, he shows a fine burst of speed before he is upended by safety man Oscar Kruger. This calls for a sideline conference, Coach Keyes and Jackie Parker. Here is Russ Jackson. He is almost nailed before he gets the pass away off the fingertips of veteran end Bobby Simpson. On third down and still five yards to go, a field goal try by Gary Schreider. From the difficult angle close in, Schreider's kick is true. The Ottawa Rough Riders break the scoring ice. Three nothing over Edmonton. First down for the Eskies, their own 35-yard line. Their great fullback, Johnny Bright, straight ahead for five yards. Edmonton's perennial all-star, quarterback Jackie Parker, on the rollout, spots Joe Bob Smith, but he's unable to hang on to the ball. Here's Vic Chapman's kick for the Eskimos, and when the ball takes a backward bounce, Ron Stewart grabs it, is hit immediately by Roy Stevenson, and the Eskimos are called for no yards. After Dave Thielen makes four yards off tackle, Ron Stewart carries here, short yardage, gets about three, Equier makes the stop. Conroy on the Ottawa 52. His kick is taken by Rolly Miles, and Fred Robinson down very fast to make the grab.
Later in the first quarter, following an exchange of kicks, here are the Western champions, first down from their seven, Parker hitting big end Jim Lefkowitz for a 13-yard advance. Schreider made the tackle. After Bright gets two yards, on second down, Parker tries for Joe Bob Smith. It's incomplete as George Brancato defends for the Rough Riders. This is Vic Chapman kicking again. It goes to Ron Stewart and watch him. He is finally chased out of bounds by Normie Kwong, but he gets back to the Edmonton 48 yard line. Into the right side of the line goes Thielen, and he picks up seven yards with Ed Gray making the stop. With three yards to go, Stewart gets twice that distance as Miles moves in from a linebacker spot and brings him down. Now directing the rough rider attack is rookie quarterback Ron Lancaster. Unable to find a receiver, Lancaster swings wide. He fumbles when hit from behind by Equier, and it's Equier himself who finally makes the recovery for Edmonton. In quarter, the Eskimos begin a drive from their own 26-yard line, a drive that leads to the first touchdown of the game. Parker finds his favorite target, Jim Lefkowitz. The gain is 19 yards. Poirier is the Ottawa defender. This time, Parker gets little chance to get the ball away as the Ottawa defense charges through, and it's Mosca who dumps him for a two-yard loss. And this is the big one for the Eskimos. Parker to Letkovitz again. The receiver is behind Schreider and outruns him for the major score as Poirier comes up just a little bit too late. Jim Letkovitz, the Edmonton hero. The try for the extra point by Tommy Joe Coffey is wide of the uprights. And the Eskimos have a three-point margin, six to three. Coffey's short kickoff is taken by Ottawa's Bill Sawalski, and he's hauled down by Howie Shum at the Rough Rider, 37. The ball carrier is Stewart, the gain is five yards, and it's Gray who piles it up. Russ Jackson is handling Ottawa's quarterback duties again. His pass to halfback Joe Kelly is worth 25 yards, a first down on Edmonton's 43. After Thielen breaks through the right side for five yards, the Riders get another break when Kelly recovers the ball on this backfield mix-up and goes up the middle for seven yards to Edmonton's 31. Now watch number 12, quarterback Russ Jackson as he bootlegs the ball beautifully. Spots and Bill Sawalski all by himself and heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Ottawa, and the Riders go in front again. And this is the man who put them there, number 75, Bill Sawalski. Schreider is wide on the convert attempt. It's Ottawa in the lead by nine points to six. The Ottawa kickoff by Mo Racine is taken by Roley Miles, a run back to the Eskimos 32, 
before Scotia brought him down. Parker's ability to get rid of the ball at the last moment is shown here as Jim Conroy piles into him just as he lets the pass go. And pulling it in for a 13-yard pickup is Letkovitz with Schreider on the tackle. And on the Edmonton bench, injured star Art Walker lends vocal encouragement. Parker to Joe Bob Smith. For nine yards, Daniel stops the advance. It's big fullback Johnny Bright who moves the sticks with a three-yard burst. Bruce stops him. The Eskimos have first down on Ottawa's 53. Again, the hard-charging Ottawa defensive unit led by Jerry Nesbitt and Jim Reynolds get to Parker. The loss is seven yards. Ottawa's defensive strength shows here in a different way as George Brancato breaks up a Parker to Chapman pass and the players resemble ballet dancers. Chapman kicking for Edmonton, Stewart taking the punt, being stopped by Coffey at the Rough Rider 19. Stewart goes on a wide sweep but gets just three yards as Vulcan and Equier combine to make the stop. And on the sidelines, Merv Collins and the professor receive a message from assistant coach Bill Smith up on the roof. Ground level shot here gives you an idea of Stewart's great speed as he goes for 17 yards before Kruger stops him. And as the first half comes to an end, it's still the Ottawa Rough Riders in front of the Edmonton Eskimos, nine points to six. And for the halftime entertainment, let's hear again from Ted Reynolds. All right, Steve, and we're all set for a tremendous demonstration of precision marching and drill by the BC Lions cheerleaders and majorettes. These youngsters perform all season at Empire Stadium and keep the crowd stirred up right from the opening gun. Musical director of the 60-piece BC Lions band is Dal Richards. The little girl in the Lions outfit is 14-year-old Mary Stewart. She's the club's mascot and one of the finest young swimmers in Canada. She beat some of the best in the world at the Olympics in Rome. All the routines and displays were worked out especially for today's game by the choreographers Gordon Olson and Grace McDonald. The theme, of course, is football with the flavor of Canadian maple. The spectators are settled down for the second half of the game. The players are on the field, and here's Steve Douglas. And speaking of spectators, there are more than 36,000 of them at Empire Stadium who watched Ottawa run up a 9-6 margin at half. Racine kicks off for Ottawa, the Rough Riders in white jerseys. From the two-yard line, Joe Bob Smith bringing it back to the Edmonton 32 before Joe Stracina makes the tackle. Ottawa's defense continues to be outstanding, and after Kwong made three yards and first down, here's Parker fading, looking for receivers, deciding finally to run the ball, and stopped by Mosca on what turns out to be just a one-yard pickup. Chapman kicking from the Edmonton 35. Stewart receiving for the Rough Riders. A nice run back, finally brought down by Chapman. On this play, the Eskimos' great fullback Johnny Bright is injured, and the anxiety of Edmonton fans shows in their faces as he's carried from the field. Ottawa.
Ottawa first down and ten, and the line opens a big hole on the right side as Dave Thielen, leading ground gainer in the big four, plows his way for 18 yards. Ottawa quarterback, Russ Jackson, goes for the big one this time. His intended receiver is Davey West. The pass is just a little bit on the short side, and safety man Oscar Kruger makes the interception. West puts the tackle on him as Sawalski comes in to help. Injured on the play, the Ottawa veteran Dave West is forced to leave the game. Fine, and here's Parker completing a 15-yard pass play to Smith with Daniel and Conroy driving him out of bounds. Following an incomplete forward pass, Howie Shum has taken Johnny Bright's place in the Edmonton backfield, and on the first play from scrimmage, he goes for seven yards into the left side of the line with Sam Scotia piling up the play. Chapman's kick again goes to Ron Stewart. His return halted by Coffey. Ottawa ball first and 10 on the rider, 36. Jackson fakes the pitch out, hands off to Thielen, and Equier makes the tackle on a two-yard pickup. Jackson rolls out, keeps, and goes for seven yards before Miles and Equier get to him, and it's one yard short of a first down. In spite of an arm broken in two places, Davy West sits it out on the Ottawa bench. Gambling on third down with a yard to go, Kelly gets the call and makes it with inches to spare. On the reverse, it's Stewart for Edmonton, Miles, Vulcan, and Equier, the defenders, and the gain is five yards. Quarterback Russ Jackson goes on his own, gets the first down before he is chased out of bounds. On the Edmonton bench, Roger Nelson. It's Thielen again, this time for six yards, and Coffey makes the stop. Thielen doubles his last yardage as the Ottawa ground game continues to function in fine style. Thielen gets 12 on this play. Jackson faking to Thielen, and in slow motion, another fine chance to see Stewart's speed, change of pace, and final determination as he leaves would-be tacklers behind him on a 19-yard ramble. Rough Riders first down on the Eskimo 16. Dave Thielen for five yards before Tully makes the grab. Jackson is after the touchdown on this one, but he overshoots his intended target, Ron Stewart, by a step or two. The Riders will go for it. Thielen gets the call, but he stopped after a two-yard gain by Toby Deese, and the Eskimos take over. No further scoring action in the third quarter. Ottawa 9, Edmonton 6. And Edmonton star Johnny Bright is on the bench waiting to resume his fullback duties. Following an exchange of kicks, Edmonton's ball first down the Eskies 22. Parker goes to work first, an 11-yard pass play to Joe Bob Smith, Brancato defending. Trying the airways again, Parker connects with Howie Shum, and before Poirier makes the tackle, it's a 12-yard advance, first down on the Edmonton 45. Right in the Edmonton backfield again, carries this time for four yards. 
But unfortunately for the Eskimos, that's Johnny's last play of the game. Aggravation of the earlier injury makes it impossible to continue. After a pass misfires, Chapman is back to kick. Daniel on the receiving end and Letkovich downfield very fast for the tackle. And one spectator didn't stick around, the Grey Cup pooch. Rough Riders ball, first down their own 24. Stewart going for six. Equia continues his fine defensive play as number one man on the stop. From the Ottawa 30-yard line, Jackson's pass down the middle is tipped by Ted Tully into Simpson's hands, and he is brought down by Kruger, the gain on the play, 17 yards. Moving the ball into Edmonton territory, it's Thielen crashing through the right side for 11 yards, Kruger coming up for the stop. Kelly on the receiving end of the pitch out, but short yardage as Equier makes the tackle, second down and nine to go. Quarterback Russ Jackson shooting long for George Brancato, but it's over his head as the Eskimos double team on defense. Conroy kicking for the Rough Riders. It goes to Rolly Miles. Daniel was there to make the tackle with Jones and Archambault on the Edmonton 17. Jim Shipka gets five yards on first down, then he carries again for two more here. Brancato stops his advance. Chapman kicks from his 10. It's Ron Stewart again, and Roy Stevenson spins him to the ground at the Ottawa 42. The Eskimo defensive unit jumps the gun as Thielen carries for four yards, and the offside penalty leaves Ottawa with first down on the 47. And now watch the lower left corner of the screen as Bob Simpson drops off the end of the line making tackle Milk Graham eligible to receive Jackson's pass for a 16-yard gain. And Coffey grounds him. On the reverse, it's Stewart going for five yards, former University of Western Ontario star Gino Frakas to make the tackle. Third down and five yards to go, and this is the play that produces Ottawa's second touchdown. Conroy's kick going to Joe Bob Smith, and Lou Bruce down to make the tackle that jars the ball loose. And as it bounces around at the goal line, Ottawa's co-captain and all-star guard Kay Vaughn falls on it for the major. Vaughn's first touchdown in 14 years of football. This time, Schreider adds the extra point, and the Rough Riders have a 10-point margin. Ottawa 16, Edmonton 6. Sports fans. Up as Racine's kickoff is taken by Jackie Parker, right on the goal line. And watch this tremendous return run of 75 yards before Reynolds gets to him from behind. The Eskimos were unable to sustain a drive, and following an exchange of kicks, they come up first down on the Ottawa 47. Don Getty at quarterback, Parker at a halfback spot. Jackie carries on the reverse, good for four yards. Getty passing to Coffey. The gain is seven yards, and a first down at the Ottawa 36. Linebacker Ron Coase making the tackle. Hey, gotta do it, gotta do it now. Edmonton works the Getty to Parker aerial combination worth 11 yards, Schreider and Conroy bringing him down. And here is heartbreak for the Edmonton contingent. Getty's pass is picked off by Doug Daniel. He brings it back to the Ottawa 30-yard line.
And with 41 seconds left to play, this is where the fans take over. One intrepid adventurer even swipes the football and exhibits some neat broken field running into the end zone. So the final score in the 19th. In 1969, he won every conceivable award from Canadian Athlete of the Year to the outstanding player of this championship game. Who's he? Ron Lancaster, quarterback of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, winner of the most valuable player award in the Western Conference the last two seasons. This will be his fourth national final. Who's he? Frank Clare, coach of the year, leader of the Ottawa Rough Riders since 1956. This was his final game behind the bench. He is now the club's general manager. Who's he? Eagle Keys, the quiet man who guides the Saskatchewan club. Western representatives in this championship game three of the last four years. And this is what it's all about, the Grey Cup. Season polls were almost unanimous in picking Ottawa and Saskatchewan to meet in the Grey Cup game. Both were considered the powers in the respective conferences. Both were. They lost only three games each during the regular season, but one of the Ottawa defeats had been to Saskatchewan, 38-21. Despite that, the Easterners were established as four-point favorites for today's game. When the game was awarded to the city of Montreal, there was concern that weather conditions in late November would create problems. Excusing the chill in the air, this Sunday afternoon couldn't have been much better. But it was a frozen, slick field which confronted the two best teams in Canada. The field conditions actually created the first break of the game. On third down, Bill Van Berkeley slips trying to punt. The recovery by Saskatchewan on the Ottawa 31 gives the Western champions excellent field position. Of the 30 passes Ron Lancaster will throw today, four will be caught by Steve Molner, including this one for a gain of three yards to the Ottawa 28. On second down, Al Ford flies out of the backfield to take a pass. He slips away from Gene Gain. Touchdown! Saskatchewan is struck with lightning speed. The convert is good. They lead 7 to nothing. Prize for split end Margene Atkins, number 73. But Henry Dorsch is there. In an effort to loosen the Saskatchewan defense, Jackson runs himself, but the brief hole snaps shut. On third down, Ottawa's punt comes to life in the hands of Bob Cassid and Larry DeGraw. Evades an anxious Dan Beaver. And finally, DeGraw pounces on it at the Saskatchewan 22. Deep in a hole, Lancaster tries to get out quickly. Number 65, Billy Joe Booth, puts on the rush. The pass for Hugh Campbell, incomplete. When Ottawa takes over again, Ron Stewart moves them into Saskatchewan territory for the first time in the game. On second down, Jackson looks for his tight end, Jay Roberts. But again, that number 16, Dorsch, makes his presence felt. The 
Penguins lead at the end of the first quarter remains nine to nothing. So after the first quarter, Joe Poirier, along with sophomore Barry Ardern. Come back, cover a miss it all. Okay, yeah, I'll come all the way back to if they throw in the flat, let him throw in the flat. Yeah, okay, if he curls behind me, yeah, curl, curl, curl. I didn't curl behind me. Well, he's going back with him. Go back with him the whole way. Almost playing mixing. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Early in the second quarter, Ottawa, stymied so far, begins to move. The leader is Rush Jackson. The yardage, 18 big ones. 